Look at the rod just cork. If there's a fish that swims, I need to catch it. Fresh water, salt water, from a boat, from a kayak, or from four inches of ice. I thrive off the new experiences fishing gives me. I'm an ex-fishing guide turned videographer calling Lake of the Woods, Ontario my home. I'm Jay Siemens, and this is The Canadian Angle. Being a Canadian, I often get strange looks when I'm crossing the border headed south into the States for a fishing trip. So often it's the other way around. In today's destination, we're headed to Devil's Lake, North Dakota, a place which has been on my bucket list for years. I've heard some people call it the closest thing to Canadian fishing for those whose criminal record won't let them cross the border. We had a sizable crew coming from Ontario, Minnesota, and Montana all to converge on this flooded farmland that is Devil's Lake. Well, we got the crew loaded up. Um, looks like we're going to beat the sunrise. I think we're starting off our, uh, our North Dakota tour with hopefully some perch. There is a thing about the cold where, uh, I don't want to call it like stress levels, but just something, cha you know, like just every experience changes a little bit. And like just same way that, ex that your experience of things changes quite a bit uh, in high wind. Like yeah. your focus shifts a little bit. Cold weather ice fishing, man, there's a little bit of like, just kind of wondering what's going to happen. Is my stuff going to work? Yep. Will the fish bite? Well, here we go, we got our first fish of the trip. That's the goal today. Hopefully a little more lively and a little more yellow and maybe a little bit bigger, but uh, that is a yellow perch. I decided to come down a few days early to do some poking around and make a game plan for the upcoming week. With the help of good friends John Hoyer and Devil's Lake locals, the LaFleur brothers, they were able to help show me around and get me tuned in with this massive system. This trip had already been postponed once due to extreme cold weather, and go figure, it got even colder the second time around. When the guys saw the forecast, they offered up their snow bear for the camera crew to use for the week. Now that's some North Dakota hospitality. As mentioned, we had quite the crew coming together for this shoot. Steve, Chester and Cal making the drive from Montana, a tournament angler and guide, Mandy Urick making the drive from Minnesota. Maybe it wasn't going to be the communal outdoor ice fishing experience we were planning for, but we had the proper gear for these frigid temps and planned to stick it out for the next three days. And most of our gear worked properly. It's so cold fire don't work, Chester. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh. Okay, you should turn that off. Definitely turn that off. Looks like what if it's not right? threaded in properly? Yeah, it looks like it got banned pretty bad. <laughs> I think it was negative 27 degrees this morning, is what the truck said. Steve almost burnt himself this morning with the propane tank. Yes, he's like talking about the cold. Everybody's like, oh, it's colder than that where I live. I don't care. There's still just a lot of goes wrong when it gets to a certain temperature. The story around the ever fluctuating water levels of Devil's Lake is definitely a polarizing topic. What may have been good for fish and fishermen has meant flooded farmsteads for local farmers. I only just scratched the surface talking to the locals about how the lake used to be, but it's definitely a very interesting topic. On this specific morning, we set up on a mud flat in 27 feet of water with perch as the goal. That's a good one, Chester. It's a keeper. I'll take him. Oh, Chester, Chester. Yeah, what's the technique? You you want to play keep away, but you don't want to play too much keep away. There's a fish on both of us right now. Like right now, since the fish hasn't committed, that fish is so close. What I was going to say is, oh, he's on. Nice. That's a perch. Pull and drag. First fish of the trip for Cal. Ooh, Ooh that's fatty. a good one. Nice perch. That's what we're talking about. That's why you Dang. come to Devil's Lake. Look at that. That's a chunk. They're all going to be like that. I read, <laughs> I read that. The thing is, when, when the perch come in, it's just go time. Like, it can happen so fast. That's a nice perch. Yeah. I'm, I'm pleased with that. There's Ryan's jig. There's my jig, and right there, those couple bumps, those are fish just slithering on the bottom. What makes the live scope so cool is that you can actually tell how many fish are down there, right? And like, see how they're chasing, interacting, and... See that? It's him kissing it. Oh, Chester! Don't worry, buddy, it's not a giant. What a fish, man. I mean the species. I I love it's I, I love that fish. It's a favorite freshwater fish of mine. Great to eat. I've caught more of those, you know, by a factor of ten than any other fish would be next to bluegills. Just there's just there's nothing objectionable about them, man. 
Chester, is it a giant? <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, sorry, buddy. Can't talk. That's a little one. Yeah, but we got a school. We'll get down there. There he is. I literally held that one right in the mud, Steve. Really? Like where I just felt it. Yep. Kind of laid it there. There he is, Chester. Woo! I mean, they're like borderline, but, but you know, up lamb. First double of the day, North Dakota Jumbo. Oh yeah, man. That is a nice fish. Oh, oh, oh I love them. So for bait, I'm using these little Euro larva. Kind of frozen like everything else today. Right there, that's perch candy. Oh, it's a good perch. Oh, this is a good one. There's like eight more fish down there. Oh, that's a big perch. That right there is why you come to North Dakota. Look at that. Normally perch are a run and gun style fish. You keep drilling and moving until you get on an active pot of fish. We were fortunate on this day that the fish were coming to us and we didn't have to move around too much. Nice. These perch were cruising the mud bottom basin we were fishing. And between jigging spoons and small tungsten jigs tipped with Euro larva, the perch bite stayed steady. You'll notice with perch, if you can get the perch excited, one perch will come up for your bait and then the second perch will see the other perch and then like that cloud lifts off the bottom. Oh yeah, oh yeah, come on. Nice, that was so good. <laughs> like they were just racing from your bait to my hilarious, bait. hilarious, man. Are we keeping this, Steve? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> While we all hopped around from shack to shack throughout the day, I'm not sure Steve moved his butt once and it paid off with by far the biggest pile of perch at the end of the day. Yeah. Nice. See, that's the size, no matter what, you gotta just skin them. Like the skin's too thick, you know? Yeah. Good pail of perch. I think Steve wins the fullest pail of perch. Yeah, but I win the didn't do anything to do to help anybody with anything. <laughs> you, set, you set the shanty up, I sat down and I got up one time to take a leap. That's what it takes. So now uh, now that it's going to get, the sun's going to set, it's like walleye time. Yeah, the perch, the perch slow down and this is when the walleye's activity pick up. So yeah, so right now we've just been fishing a basin. We're going to go around the corner and fish the mouth of a kind of a creek. It's an old old ditch that runs out there. And we'll probably set up at 30 and see if we need to move around a bit, but it's, it's a pretty specific ditch. Like, it seems like the last couple of days I was checking it out, there was fish just channeling right through it, so. All right, and then we'll fish for how long? Like two hours? Fish till five sort of thing, fish into the dark, maybe half an hour past dark. Yeah. not a giant. I'm not worried about it yet. Yeah! First one, small one. We're gonna eat them. <laughs> All right. But uh, it's better, I think it feels better than the last one. Yeah, Beautiful. Got them? There's another one down there. There's a big one on you right now. This isn't very big. There's a big one right on you. All right. I'm excited to see what that way is. Get him to bite. That's a good mark. There he is. There you got him? Yeah. Old ya. Ah! Oh! Oh! That, that was a good fish, man. Really? That was a good one. Oh. That was like a really good one. <laughs> you got a lucky pair of fishing underwear that you just flip inside out every time you need to catch a big fish? No, I'm not much of an underwear guy, Jay. <laughs> When this trip was being planned, something we all wanted to do was go pike spearing. It's not even an option for me back home, so I was excited at the prospect of experiencing my first pike spearing mission. 
Chester had done some scouting the week before on a small lake just off of Devils. This lake had clear water which lends itself to better pike spearing conditions. The next day we headed out in hopes of spearing a few North Dakota pike and the first step in that process is to cut a big hole in the ice. The easiest way to do this is by first using your auger to cut an outline of the spearing hole. Next we take an ice saw to connect these holes together. The final step is to push the chunk of ice underneath. This becomes increasingly more difficult as the season progresses and the ice gets thicker. After a bit of rocking you're usually able to slide the chunk under the ice. The last step is to set up a shack and make sure all outside light is blocked out. The darker the better. So we've got tip up line because this is all we had tied to a decoy. Let's pull that up real quick. This is my first decoy actually. I've never been spear fishing. What is that, a perch? Yeah, it looks like a perch, a cool natural looking pattern. And it's got an amazing action. When you give this a twitch, it just swirls around. It seems like just some sharp, short pops just get it kind of swimming in a loop. I can see why they come into that. Yeah. I know some people use like live suckers and stuff too. Yeah. So we've got that tied off to the top of the Eskimo here. And then we have a spear. Just a steel rod, my trident. Um, can't be more than 12 inches in North oh, yeah. Dakota. We have that tied to a paracord, and we just put an ice screw in the ice so we don't lose it. <laughs> I could see that happening. So jigging this up and down, we're in like what, probably like 12 feet. It's pretty deep, but we can see the bottom. A good clarity. Well, once again, Mandy and Steve had the activity at their shack. It didn't take long, and the first customer of the day came by to take a look at their decoy. Oh, but he's close. Wait, he's right there. He's right there. He's right there. He's coming in. He's coming in. He's coming in. Oh, oh, yep, yep. Get in. You take it. Oh, I got it. Hey, he's right there. He's right there. He's under the propane tank right now. He's going back around your chair right there. He might come back. Not a giant, but a definite, definite shooter. Don't move. Shh. That's a big fish. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. I'm sure I missed. <laughs> yep. Wow. I should have just let him come back, man. Why did I not just let him come back? I should just wait and see if he circled back around. That was a good, that was probably a 30, yeah, that was 30 inch fight. That was so cool. Ah, he didn't come back now. So cool. I'm now I'm like rethinking everything about what just happened. Steve, 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 Steve. That's him. Got him. You got him. Woohoo! There we go. There we go. What do you think? Sweet! I didn't think it was going to happen. Should we let him go? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're catching a release on that one. Yeah, yeah you, don't have, you don't even have the option today, man. <laughs> no, no, unfortunately we don't. Come on! No, well, there he is. That's a good shot. You made, you made up for the other one. Well, I feel like he might be the other one. You think it's the same fish? Well, I mean, he's... It looks about the same it, size. Yeah, and then, you know, I don't know, like in... You know, he approached, took the gander, swiped at it. He swiped it was like, at it, it was again? Like, it was like he did the exact same approach, exact same swipe. I don't wow. know. I feel like he was like, oh, wow, there's another one of them. I don't think you can make a better shot because you didn't touch any meat. No, he <laughs> didn't He didn't do a whole lot. He got, it, wow. it, it stoned him. That is sweet. Yeah, it's great, man. Nice work. Chester and I had a few flybys in our shack, but nothing to throw a spear at. After a few more hours, we decided to pack up. One of the most important things to remember when cutting a giant hole in the ice is to make sure you mark it before you leave. How many you got? Some people are a minnow head guy. I'm a minnow tail guy. I'm, like a, minnow, just I'm a minnow guy. Just a, just a full minnow guy. So this spot is kind of the same deal as the first day is that mud basin collects all the bugs, collects, collects the food chain and some perch and hopefully Maybe a white bass through the ice. My buddies took me out here the other day and I caught my first whitey through the ice. And it's not a commonly targeted fish through the ice. It's like something you catch as a bycatch open water, but not something sure, people yeah. really target through the ice. So it's kind of cool. I mean, I love the, the oddities in fishing and they're pretty cool to see on the electronics. They pot up in like five or six. And Yeah, I haven't caught one of those in a long time, but we used to 
catch them trying to catch walleye. Oh yeah, same spots. Yeah. yeah, they're kind of a, a weirdly like unsung fish, you know, compared to perch and walleye. People love crappies, like a big crappie is so prized, and basically yeah. there's like a supersized crappie they look like. It blows my mind how many fish get harvested out of this lake, and now it's still such a strong fishery. I mean, if there's 150 guides or 200 guides in the winter, let's say they're guiding two people on average, so 400 anglers, and they each can keep 20 perch a day, that's a lot of perch. A little piece of meat on there for added attraction when they want to close in and sniff it. What are you switching to? I'll just bottom two flies on a, you know, like a crappie rig type oh, thing. Yeah. Quite the rig going on. Oh, there's another one coming in. This is good. So we've been yeah. waiting for How's it. How's he not like that little delectable little morsel I have? Oh man. There. These are good sized fish. Yeah. Could this be the white bass? The last species to check off the list? He's following it. Is he going to eat it? I'm running out of room. Got him. There you go. Nice. Ooh. Or it's a big perch. We'd have worked for our first bite. I'm thinking white bass. You got a good one looking at yeah, you though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's right at the bottom of the hole. Oh, that's a big white bass. Oh, nice. <laughs> Look at that thing. Dude, that's great. Look man. how fat it is. Wow. That's beauty, man. They're such cool looking fish. That's awesome. Yeah, tall fish like that, you know, he's got a good fighting structure. It's just a mini striped bass, basically. You know, beautiful, man. I'm looking forward to eating one, because I've heard they're amazing. Quite a while. Like, they are built like, it's like a smallmouth. Yeah. It's like a really chunky smallmouth. Yeah, those are cool. Yeah, we're gonna get some good slabs off of that. After crossing the big three, pike, perch, and walleye off the list, it was great to bring a white bass topside. And as you can tell by the amount of time we spent in the shack, it was far from ideal conditions for the entirety of this trip. But we decided to tough it out one last time and make a move for the evening walleye bite. So the spot we're fishing, uh, my buddy was saying it used to be old shoreline. So before the lake flooded. This is the old rock yeah, shoreline. Yeah, like 22, 23 feet of water to think. Like think about how much water that is added to the lake. There, there we go. <laughs> Sweet. Hey. You can see his tail kicking. Nice. We'll keep him. Hey. Oh, get him, get him, get him! <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's probably the biggest one yet. You know what I'm gonna do with this walleye, Steve? I'm, I'm, gonna, put it, I'm gonna put in some catch and cook. I'm gonna give you the catch and cook experience. Please, please, please. I think that's it, Steve. We caught a lot of fish, man. We did, they Considering were- Considering the conditions? No, I mean, just in general, over the last few days. Considering the conditions. This is like, I'm from Canada and we like to act tough about the cold. Yeah. This was like the, the coldest, probably three days of ice fishing I've endured. Cold and wind, you couldn't hole hop. No, you know I, mean, I mean, I would love to drill a, a couple for the perch, drill a couple holes, move around. But like we, I think we're pretty fortunate with where we set up and what yeah. we got. I think we got the Devil's Lake Grand Slam. You got it pretty well covered. Finished it off with a... Got a Northern Pike. White bass. Your world record white bass. The not world record walleye. Perfect eating size. And a very middle of the road perch. We did it. It's a good perch. Yeah. No, it's a nice perch. No one's gonna throw that perch back. No. These are all what you would call uh, mild white fleshed fish. I I've heard this will probably be the strongest tasting, but mm -hmm. I haven't eaten a white bass, so. I would say that 90, 95% of the fish I've ever pulled through the ice have wound up being deep fried. Yeah. You know, like it's fresh, fresh water fishing, a lot of deep frying. Yeah. We're gonna rig these fish up for frying. Good knife work, man. Knife skills is life skills. <laughs> I've never heard that one. Nate and Blake that showed me the ways of the white bass, they said cutting off that red meat is pretty uh, pretty key when you're eating. Got it. When you're eating white bass. You got your pike, walleye, white bass, and our one perch. We're gonna wash them and uh, start coating them. So what's your go-to for putting in, like do you put in water, milk, eggs? What's your, what's your first, typically? Sometimes I do mustard, and hot sauce mixed. Yep. And I do pre in there, and then I go into cornmeal. Yep. Or I use, you know, various coating things, and I've been eyeballing. 
I ball your, that. Your particular coating well, mix you'll, too. You'll give it a try today. So this is your very own coating mix. Very own. Me and my buddy Josh, yeah, catch and cook. So we're we're gonna we're gonna go from water because water you always got handy. I know like when you're camping or whatever to bring eggs along is kind of a hassle or milk keep it. Mm -hmm. So I like using water. And then we're gonna go. We're gonna make sure they're wet into the catch and cook, then back into the water, and then back into the catch and cook. What'd you call it, Jay? The double dip. The double dip. Summoning the Canadian crunch. double dip. <laughs> So I'll put it in here and then I don't want it completely soaked, but I just want to like dab it and then get it back ah, that's in. The, that's the dog. And then when you get that little chunky stuff, that's what's going to get really crunchy, like your KFC chicken or whatever, right? Got a piece, boys. It's getting cold. I like the coating, man. Well, it's hot. And I see that you don't overcook. No, everyone overcooks fish. Oh, yeah. Fried fish is like burgers, right? Mm -hmm. Burgers are good. Uh, yeah. Fried fish is good, but each burger has its own little, right? Yep. Maybe you eat a burger and you really like the pickle. What I'm feeling right now that I like is Jay here's, uh, it's almost like holding a piece of crab meat in the claw, that yeah. shell. Yep. I like the crunch. It's all about the crunch. That's nice, man. That's nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, right, we got more to cook. We got the white bass to try yet. I'm pretty sure this is. I'm pretty sure it's a piece of white bass. The red meat we didn't cut off. So, man, do you grew up hating white bass? We did. They were. They were like a malign species. Yeah, they're rough fish. We didn't eat them. Try one out. I'm the lemon guy. <laughs> That's my job. You can taste. You, you can be. Like, he doesn't fit. It's different. Mm -hmm. I'd eat him. Hit the Jester. Thanks, buddy. Mm-hmm. You can tell instantly. He's got that rough fish. That kick. That mud, whatever it is. You know what I mean? It's good, but there's a little something. Just ever so faint lurking in the background. I hate to say it though, if you fed this though to somebody that doesn't, you know, have this in the regular diet, I don't know if they would know the difference. There's no way that they're going to pick this out specifically and not know that that's not what fish yeah. is supposed to taste like. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. everybody assumes it's got a fishy taste. But, but after, yeah, doesn't. you're right. After a lifetime of eating questionable fish and rough fish, you start to really develop like a fine-tuned sense of that, whatever it is that gives them their little something. Yeah. On the spectrum, it's not, it's low on the spectrum. So like, you go out fishing for them again, you'd keep a few. I would mess with them more and trim them more carefully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good stuff go. though, man. We did it. That's a northern. That's a good fry fish. That was a hell of a bass, though, buddy. Hell of a white bass. I'm glad we got one. Mm-hmm.